when we look at oligopoly we see that there could be a collusive behavior or a non collusive behavior in a collusive behavior the monopoly will be acting like a cartel and they can act together to set the price or the quantity or anything else to make them become more profitable however when we look at non collusive uh, case this is when the oligopoly is competing in order to gain more market share one such theory of uh, non collusive uh, oligopoly is the king demand curve which is devised uh, in 1930s by an american economist called paul sweezy although the theory has been called into question it does provoke some interesting thoughts about the uh, non collusive behavior of an oligopoly the theory assumes that let's take there is a particular price at which the firm is operating then the firm will have a very elastic demand above that price and inelastic demand below that price so if i show that through diagram let's say currently we have a price which is p not and the theory says this that above this price p not the firm will have a elastic demand which means this demand curve will cease to exist after this point a while after uh, price p not or below price p not we will have an inelastic demand which means prior to p not this demand curve will not be existing and that's why i'm making a dotted demand curve now why is that so let's talk about this uh, according to the theory it says that if the firm raises its price above p not then it is unlikely that its competitors would raise their price and so a lot of demand would be lost to the other firms why because if you raise your price and let's say there is interdependence and your competitor doesn't really also increase the price then you will lose the market to them this means that above p not when you raise the price above p not demand will be relatively elastic Uh, since a small increase in price will lead to a large fall in quantity demanded if you do increase your price now what will happen if you decrease the price well if the firm were to lower its price then it is likely that the competitors would follow so any price below p not the competitors competitors will also follow why because they don't want to lose any sales so uh, it is likely they would also sort of lower their price in order to regain any lost sales that must have happened because of you lowering your price so when the firm lower the price the competitors follow suit when the when the firm increases the price the competitors will not follow suit so when you lower your price as a result of that your market share will not change so a decrease in price is unlikely to lead to any change or increase in quantity demanded and that explains the demand curve will be relatively inelastic so this is what the theory says that because you have two kinds of behavior to be seen when you increase price the competitor is not going to follow your move but when you decrease price he will follow your suit or the firm will follow your suit which makes the demand curve to be a kinked demand curve around point a it would now also have an mr which is going to be also elastic for this part of the demand curve and inelastic for this part of the demand curve so let's draw that so for the elastic demand curve i will have a elastic mr so that my mr will look like this but for my inelastic demand curve i will have an mr that will look like this and if you look at the demand curve i can call my demand curve to be x a d so let's write this and the mr curve will be x let's call this y z and mr so let's call x y z and mr now this theory therefore implies that if you now draw the cost curve so let's draw a cost curve let's say my cost curve is mc not then clearly mc equals to mr now will happen at this point which means the price will be p not quantity will be q not and even though the firm see an increase in cost let's say marginal cost goes from mc not to mc1 we will not see any change in the price or quantity and the reason is simply because as long as the marginal cost is between this zone y z the mc equals to mr happens at that point 
where it is elastic and as a result of this you will not see any change in price and quantity only if there's a very high change in cost for example if the marginal cost becomes for example mc sort of two or let's say the marginal cost becomes for example mc3 you will see a change in the price or quantity otherwise the mc equals to mr will lead to the same price p naught and the same quantity q naught and this suggests to us that despite the changes in cost there will be what we call price rigidity in this market structure this is very unique of oligopoly that in oligopoly there will be price rigidity or price stickiness because of the fact that the firms are reluctant to change price. So we can sort of identify three reasons or recap three reasons of this price registry. Number one, firms are afraid to raise prices above the current market price because other firms will not follow and so they will lose trade sales and probably profit. So any price increase is not matched by the competitor because you will lose your sales. Secondly, firms are also afraid to lower their price below the market price because other firms will follow, undercutting them. And so this can also end up creating a price war that may harm all the firms involved. So firms may be reluctant to also even lower the price because they don't want to get into an unnecessary price war. And lastly, we saw the shape of the MR curve was such that if the marginal cost was to rise, in the zone then it is possible that the MC would still equal to MR and so the firms will being profit maximizer will not change their prices because it is within that zone where MR was completely vertical. The king demand curve therefore makes some really important predictions. Number one is that businesses might be reaching a stable profit maximizing equilibrium at that price uh, P naught and Q naught that we talked about. Let me go back to the diagram and show you guys. This P naught and Q naught, this will be what we call a stable price with little incentive to change the price. Now, second important sort of conclusion we make, which is also seen in oligopoly, is because of this price stability or rigidity that we see, firms then have to rely on something called non price competition for for gaining market share such as uh, advertising or after sales service or any such uh, thing like branding which can result in them to gain market share without competing on prices. So firms are reluctant to compete on price but they are more keen to do what we call advertising and other non-price competition to gain market share. There are some criticisms of the King Demand Curve. The first one uh, which uh, we can uh, completely see here is this, that it fails to explain how the firm determines the original price P0 and quantity Q0 to begin with. In a way, this theory could kind of work backwards and say that if the price is P0 and Q0 is the quantity, then this is what the behavior will look like for an oligopoly which seems kind of unrealistic when it comes to real life that we know the price and quantity from before. Nonetheless, what we can see is that uh, King Demand Curve Theory does explain to us a couple of concepts. Number one is that it tells us the price rigidity which is normally seen in oligopoly and it also tells us the non-price competition that is also commonly found in oligopolies because of the price rigidity that takes place. Hey there, if you like what you saw right now, head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers, videos, revision guides, flashcards, and academic support. All of this is gonna make sure that you're completely set for your A-levels. So I'll see you there on the platform.